Hello everyone and welcome to Edu Surge Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. This is a second video in our research publishing series and today we are going to discuss the levels of evidence, the various types of publications and some important basics about journal and publications. So let us see. So the first point is levels of evidence. This is a very important topic. You need to understand what you are publishing, right? The types of articles are basically based on levels of evidence. Foundation studies are animal studies or laboratory experiments which become basis for advanced studies. However, in medical practice, there are various types of publications and these are basically the levels of evidence. What that means is that if you are getting some information from a systematic review or a meta-analysis of RCT, that is an evidence that you can very easily implement in practice if it is from a good source, right? So that means that L1 is probably the best level of evidence and L5 is the lowest level of evidence. However, remember that none of this means that if you have written an article which is a narrative review, it is not a good level of evidence. Everything is important as far as research is concerned and as far as its implications on practice are concerned. But these levels are there to help you understand what to implement, where to implement and which study to use to implement the information into your clinical practice, right? So L5 are basically narrative reviews, expert opinions and editorials. However, be aware that expert opinions and editorials are very important concept building articles. They summarize a lot of evidence that is there in that general journal issue. And that is why they are very important articles. So don't feel that you should not write L4, L5 and you should start writing with L1. That is not possible only. A very practical advice that I give to all my students is start with L5 or L4, start with a case reports or a case series, then start with reviews, then start with RCT or systematic review, and then start with meta-analysis. So that is how you can progress in your academic career, right? So based on levels of evidence, a very commonly asked question, L5 is narrative review, expert opinions and editorials. L4 is case report or case series. L3 is case control studies and review of case control studies. Whereas L2 is review of cohort studies or prospective cohort studies. Okay, that is why a lot of thesis guidelines want you to do prospective studies. That is level two evidence. Okay. Level one evidence is systematic review and meta-analysis of RCTs and RCTs. And clinical practice guidelines are also considered as level one because they are more or less systematic reviews of already published articles. Now, out of these articles that are written de novo, are known as primary studies, that is L2, L3 and RCT, okay, as well as case report or case series. And secondary studies are guidelines, meta-analysis and systematic review. So studies which originate from other studies, okay, studies which originate by studying other already published articles are secondary studies. And studies which are de novo created are primary studies. So this slide is very important from exam point of view also, as well as for starting your academic journey. Start with L4 and proceed towards L1. That is the best advice. Now understand that there are many other publication types as well that are not mentioned in the level of evidence. These can be image submission, video-based article, letter to the editor, invited review, short summary, commentary, perspective, how I do it, which are basically very skilled people who are writing on how I do it, methodology of doing various study or procedures and study design for trials. So these are also some different study and publication types that you will see in journal. So understand that the levels of evidence is not a comprehensive overview of the types of articles that are present. 
and understand that all these types are there for a reason. You learn from all of them. So don't consider case report inferior. Don't consider an image submission inferior because you never know if that same image will come in your practice in future and you will be able to treat your patient better. So all these publication types are very important. Now coming to the next part, what is a journal? You can get hospital magazines, there are society magazines, but are they all journals? The answer is no. There are three important points that you need to see before selecting a journal for your publication. One is it should be a periodical publication. What that means is it can be once a year, twice a year, three times in a year and so on. A recent advance in types of journal is known as open issue. What that means is that in commonly online only journals, new articles can be constantly added to the same issue. Okay, so a journal in an open issue, usually online mode, new articles are constantly added throughout the year. So this is not a periodical publication, but it is still a journal in an open issue. Second important point is the journal should have blind peer review. Okay, this is important for article to be assessed for its quality. So select a journal which has blind peer review. I know that that increases the processing time of the article, but that ensures that you are submitting your article to a very good quality journal and your reviewers are also very good. Okay, so double blind peer review is the best peer review that you can have in a journal for approving the quality of the article. Another important point is the indexing or external validation or the impact factor of the journal. Journals which are PubMed index are supposed to be very good journals. So that is one hint. Other indexing platforms are also there. So select index journal okay? because impact factor and uh, indexing is very important to authenticate a journal. We will see impact factor in a separate talk, but external validation or indexation is important. So external validation or indexing of a journal is very important factor to know before selecting the journal for publication. So these three factors, periodicity, peer review and indexing are very important to select a journal for publication. And this allows you to not fall prey to predatory journals, okay? The predators are looking out to make profit by charging you article processing charges, but for shabby journals, okay, that are, these are predatory journals. They don't improve your CV. They don't give good literary value. They may give you publication in two, three days, but the article will suffer from poor views and poor reviews after publication because it's a predatory journal, right? So understand the journal that you are selecting before going ahead with publication. Finally, some important author points. The mind is important. Your author team is important. There are some practical tips that I will give here in folders section. And important part is to read other articles. Okay, So these four points are very important qualities of an author. Have an inquisitive mind. Raise a query on each and every step of your publication journey and be research oriented okay don't just practice to treat patients understand that your research is going to be someone else's education in future okay it is very important to have a like-minded team and the leader should be open to suggestions allocate time to the team for research now these folders is a very important concept that i have practically used in all my publications and in journey as an academic surgeon so far, I keep these four folders ready in my laptop and desktop as well as on drive. One is on the plans. So whatever future papers I am planning will be there in the plans folder. The papers that I am already working on, the data of that paper, the consents, etc. goes into the in-process folder. There is a submissions folder which takes care of the articles that are already submitted, awaited for review, awaited for publication and so on. And there is a folder with formatted templates. We will see each and every template as various next sections are covered. 
but these four folders make your writing process very easy okay it helps you to recollect your plans your in process folders the submissions folder help you in tracking your publications and your format templates help you in publishing very easily like i said be better every day you can serve as a journal reviewer that is a very nice way of identifying mistakes that people make while writing an article and some reviews may be so nice that you may learn from those articles. Read and analyze other articles in a way to learn from those articles on the literary journey, right? Some other tips, keep growing your level of evidence. Like I said, start from L4 and go towards L1. Be aware of the journal authenticity and review the journal guidelines. Look at the periodicity, indexing, impact factor and the peer review process of the journal. Don't be happy if the journal states that the review is completed in two days. It may be a predatory journal. Keep your folders ready as we have discussed. Build teams for research and collaboration. Patient consents are very difficult once the patient is discharged. So keep the consents ready. Be interested in research and publication as means to learn and spread knowledge. For further reading, this is a book that is there on Amazon Kindle. It's free or for Kindle Unlimited. It gives you a step-by-step -step guide to research publication. Thank you.